Hello everybody, it's Slippery Jack, and today I'm going to be covering the various EPs of Boards of Canada. So, it should come as no surprise now that I absolutely love this band and hold them in really high regards. Someone commented on my GeoGaddy video asking me if I could review the EPs, and I thought, you know, why not? Because, after all, I reviewed two of them, and I think that some of their best material is found on their EPs. So, yeah, let's get into it. Like, first I'll give you some quick thoughts on Tuism, even though I already reviewed it, but just in case you didn't see it. Um, yeah, my, my opinion has not shifted since that video. I still think it is a very uh, decent EP. It is, uh, you know what, it, I honestly feel like it is more of an album than it is an EP. It flows like an album, it feels like an album, it is the length of an album. Um, but I think uh, my main issue with it is just that while Tuism is an, it's a, its own experience, the um, the techniques that are done on it are um, improved upon in future albums. So sometimes I feel less of a need to return to it. But it is a uh, but it's it's still nice to come back to it. Its dark and melancholic feel does draw me back. And yeah, it's still a 75 out of 100. Um, High Scores is their next EP. I think it is a much stronger one. It doesn't have the same emotional resonance as Tuism, and it doesn't feel as much like an album as that one did, but it is still a really dang solid EP. The title track is uh, quite percussive for a BOC track, like, it's kind of kind of getting like an early um, artificial intelligence thing going on. Um, the beat reminds me a lot of something you would find on Attacker's Triber P Day, um, but the uh, its melodies and pads uh, do remind you that this is Boards of Canada you are listening to, and uh, not Attacker. Um, Turquoise Hexagon Sun was on Music Has the Right to Children which re was released two years after High Scores, and I don't know why BOC keeps doing this, like... You know, on all their EPs, there is, um, like, at least one song that is, um... Not, uh, that was on a studio album, excluding In a Beautiful Place Out in the Country, which, um, doesn't have any of that. I'll be getting to that. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that Turquoise Hexagon Sun works better in the context of Music Has the Right to Children than it does on High Scores, but... It is still a good song, and it's nice having it here. The Low Glax is a very strange track for BOC. Very, um, once again, we're getting like more of that artificial intelligence kind of thing on the percussion. It's got a very techno-esque bass line, and it's a uh, very robotic and mechanical for Boards of Canada. You know, you could play this at a club. It's a uh, very much like a, a dance song. Even though they don't actually, uh, Boards of Canada has made it very clear that they are not a dance group, but this is, um, this, I think this is the one exception. Uh, and yeah, though it is mechanical for a while, it does build up to some more lush melodies later on that remind you that this, uh, yeah, this is still the same band. Um, June 9th is also quite mechanical, but it has a little more of a GeoGaddy kind of feel going on. I've always loved it. The build-up is uh, really, uh, really fantastic. Um, See You Later was on Tuism, but I think it's more suited uh, to be here than, uh, I think works better here than it does on that album. Maybe because I listened to High Scores um, long before I listened to Tuism, but I digress. It's a really nice track that is strangely happy but simultaneously creepy. Um, but then there is Everything You Do Is A Balloon, which is perhaps BOC's most well-known song. Um, this album as a whole, like I said, it doesn't really resonate with me very emotionally, but this is the exception. Everything You Do Is A Balloon is very much um, a moody, emotional track that always gets me in the feels. It starts out with some twinkling melodies at the beginning, that are followed by these big cushions of synths uh, that come in and create this very cold atmosphere accompanied 
by these uh by some beautiful melodies that just kind of go on throughout the song and it's just a very simple yet very immersive track that is super easy to get into and despite its dark leanings it is a it is a very comforting track for me to listen to definitely um one of their best and i can i can see why um many people like it so much and overall high scores is really solid it's um it's enjoyable in a different way but it is still a project that i always enjoy returning to i'm feeling an 82 out of 100. next is the aquarius ep it contains their classic song aquarius but with a raw and slow down kind of sound to it and uh yeah, it was pretty cool. I enjoyed hearing that kind of take on it. Not as good as the original, though. And then um, Chinook, um, which sounds nothing like Boards of Canada. It is very percussive and mechanical sounding and reminds me a lot more of something Autechre would do. Um, they have better material, but it's cool hearing BOC experiment with this kind of sound. I'm overall feeling a 72 out of 100. In a beautiful place out in the country. This one came after Music Has the Right to Children, so at this point they were um, moving away from their more percussive sound and into more of a melody and atmospheric approach. And the nostalgia on here is very strong, like most of their stuff. And, um, you know, all of their albums have, um, all their EPs have like some kind of uh, experience you can get from them but not one quite as unique as with this one in a beautiful place out in the country is very much its own animal and um uh, it's uh i mean it's not like twoism where it feels like it could be an album but it this one sure as heck flows like an album and feels like um uh, i mean feels like one in terms of mood and atmosphere the thing that these songs seem to be going for is a uh, very uh is a very lush and uplifting sound uh, but slightly sinister at the same time kid for today which is probably my favorite song off the album um exemplifies this pretty well it has this strange beat that is believed to be created uh from a slide projector and uh Man, that beat like really gets the song stuck in your head, and it is one of their most emotional uh, ever. It always never fails to hit that nostalgia button, and it's just yeah, it's just such a beautiful and wholesome song, one of their best easily. Ammo Bishop Roden, not quite as uh, emotional as um, Kid for Today, but it uh, does uh, does continue the overall mood of the album. It's a uh, this one sounds a lot more detached and ghostly, um, probably because it is so focused on the higher end, and um, yeah, I it's not a track I ever think about when thinking about BOC, but it is a uh, it's one that I wish I I returned to more. It's good. The title track has a very trance inducing quality to it, and I don't know what it is, but it is very relaxing. It's quite simple and doesn't really have a lot going on. Uh, but it's it's pads and it's vocoders and just everything comes together so well and it's yeah it's just really weird it's like almost like ASMR you could really com I don't know if you could compare it to that but that's the best I can do um, Zoetrope is dominated by these twinkly synths that kind of echo after each note um, and it's really pretty but I have to admit it kind of wears off its welcome it's a good track, but it could have been shorter. Um, so, In a Beautiful Place Out in the Country is really solid. I liked every song, and I just love the overall feeling of it. I'm feeling an 80 out of 100. Trans Canada Highway. This one I have mixed feelings about. I think these songs have a lot of potential, but they just aren't grabbing me in the same way as BOC songs usually. I think that maybe the reason for this is because I haven't spent a lot of time with it until now, but I've never had that problem with any of BOC stuff. I mean, like stuff like GeoGaddy kind of took some time to to get into, but just after a few listens, that one started to click with me. This one, 
I've listened to it um, several times, and yeah, I don't really see this problem fixing itself. Though, like, uh, Left Side Drive has been growing on me a lot, so that's the exception. Um, it doesn't have um, the same emotional resonance as most of their songs does. Well, th yeah, that's probably because it hasn't been a part of my life like a lot of their other songs have, but I love, but it's just such a nice track. I love the foggy atmosphere and it's got some really nice dreamy melodies and I think after a couple of years this could be a favorite. Um, it's got Dave and Cowboy, which is a really awesome track, but it was already on the campfire head phase and I think it fits better on there than it does on this one. Um, Skyliner, um, I enjoyed it when I first heard it, but I don't know, this one d doesn't really, it does like nothing for me. I mean, I see what they're going for, they're kind of trying, they seem to be going for kind of an epic, uh, kind of almost cinematic thing, but they've done that a lot better on other tracks and it's and it doesn't really seem to be growing on me in fact it kind of shrunk on me a little bit too um but like i do enjoy i i still enjoy it while it's on i like the the percussion i thought that sounded pretty cool and you know me yeah like left side drive maybe one day i'll get it but it's just not working now um, heard from Telegraph Lines and Under a Coke Sign were qu quite nice interludes. Um, I prefer Under a Coke Sign, but both of them were extremely forgettable. Um, and it ends with a remix of Dave Van Kelvel. And to be honest, I never was a big fan of remixes, and the odd Nasdam remix was no exception. It stretched the song out to almost 10 minutes. And it doesn't seem to have any resemblance to the original. I mean, that resemblance is there, but it just sounds like it's slowed down and glitched out. And it just doesn't have the power that the original had. Maybe that's not what it's going for, but I liked how the other one, the other one just had uh, lots of power. It had a punch to it, but this one, it's just like, can't decide if it's ambient or I don't even know what you call it. But I don't, it was interesting, uh, it was interesting to hear it, but I don't see myself returning to it anytime soon. So, um, there's some good moments on Trans Canada Highway, but it lacks emotional depth for me. And it was very poorly pieced together. I'm overall feeling a 68 out of 100. And yeah, sorry to, enter, to end this video on a disappointing note. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Boards of Canada's EPs. I hope you enjoyed that. Like and subscribe to support the channel and drop a comment below. Tell me what your favorite EP they did was or like what your favorite songs are from these EPs. Just, you know, anything. I just want, I want to hear your thoughts on this stuff. So thank you very much for watching. That is all I have for you today. That's all I have for you today. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.